we are talking about writing and publishing your book. Now, this is a book that we published early this year. 16 of us came together. Now, if you've been with us along here in the episodes, you must have seen one or two of the authors who are here. Today is another day when we have one of the authors who's contributed in this book, talking about writing and publishing your book. And he's going to tell us a bit more on writing and publishing. So if you're contemplating putting together a book and publishing it, you're in the right place. Don't go anywhere. If you have a question about writing and publishing, you can always ask. We will be glad to answer you. If you have any comment about the episode or about the podcast as a whole, we thank you in advance. Please make it. And remember to subscribe to our channel, wherever it is that you're watching us from, and share it with your friends. Thank you very much. And now I would like to ask you to join me as we go and get to meet our guest today, who is known as Mark M. Bello. He's going to be here shortly. And uh, yeah, let's go and enjoy the conversation. Here we go. Hello, Mark. Hello, Anthony. Yes, nice how are you? you again? Yeah, good, good to see you again. I'm good, thank you. Yes. Yeah, we've been here with you before, but that's some time back. It's been a year or something. And we talked about your books, not even once, I think, uh, twice or thrice, if I remember well. And... Uh, it's quite inspiring when you have someone who's doing things and accomplishing things. And that's, that's Mark, who's Thank done you. more than one thing in their own life. And uh, we can tell from the look that you've been here for some time. So you've got a lot to share <laughs> with us. <laughs> I, I look old. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> <laughs> not, not really. Not really. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> But, but you you look experienced and um, experienced. I like yeah, that. Yeah, experienced. You look you you look experienced, and we love to have people who have uh, experience because they can always share with us some ideas and tips about life in general, and uh, specifically about whatever it is that they have done as a career or otherwise. So, for someone who may be seeing you for the very first time, please introduce yourself to them. Oh, the, the latest news is I just had my 10th grandchild last Wednesday. Oh. Um, so if, you, if you're talking about how old I am, that, that's how old I am. Um, uh, I, I'm an attorney. I practiced law for roughly 50 years, retired, and started writing legal thriller novels. And then I branched out to... Uh, social justice and safety children's books, picture books. Uh, we discussed one on, on your other podcast. And uh, I'm having fun. I've, it's it's not like I'm setting the world on fire or or finding a new career that's making me tons of money, but but I'm enjoying myself in, in my so-called retirement years. Wow. <laughs> I've, written, I've written now... Um, Nine Zachary Blake legal thrillers, a cozy legal mystery, uh, two children's social justice and safety books, and a Jewish cookbook, recipe mm. cookbook. If you like, if you like uh, Jewish food, I, uh, my cookbook is for you. 
Wow, that's that's wonderful. And congratulations on seeing your 10th grandchild. I mean, isn't that a blessing? It's such a he, blessing. He, he is absolutely a blessing. Yeah, and also a blessing for you to live to see your, your grandchildren and still uh, healthy, still, and knowing your way around the house. Uh, and I make that <laughs> that joke because of someone who made it to me sometime. They say, I, Anthony, I can still find my way around the house. So that's a blessing. I'm sorry, what was the last thing you said? A blessing. I say it's a blessing once you- It, it, you, it, you, it, it, it absolutely is. Yes, and you're doing something, I would say, important. Now, I've, I've met with people who are retired, not one, not twice, not, not two people. Uh, many people who, after retirement, don't have an idea what they're going to do about the, uh, with their lives. And you started writing after retirement. How was that? How was the decision that? You said, okay, I need well, it, just to. It, it actually writing. was, it, it actually started as, as what I would call a bucket list item. Mm -hmm. I, I, in my thirties, when I was younger than you are today, I think, uh, I handled a case in my law practice involving two children who were sexually abused by a priest mm -hmm. and while that can happen anywhere uh, the troubling thing about the case was not just the fact that there are predator priests out there as we all know from the uh, large-scale scandal that developed as a result of these kinds of cases mm-hmm but what was really troubling was that the church didn't handle it very well. Mm -hmm. They they covered up the crime. They shipped the priest out of town. They hid witnesses. Uh, they did a lot of you know, what I'm going to call nasty things. Mm -hmm. And I, I said to myself after the case was over, my God, this is unbelievable. Uh, I should write a book about this, not not even thinking that I was capable of doing such a thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I always said to myself, you got to write a book about this. And the intent was to write a nonfiction account of the case mm -hmm. and, descri and describe what, to other lawyers, for instance, what it's like to handle this kind of a case. Mm-hmm. In fact, I had a lot of lawyers calling me back then. This is in the eighties. Yeah. Uh, asking me if they could, if I could share my deposition transcripts and my and my pleadings and things like that because they had uh, a similar case. Mm -hmm. And I always, I was always willing to do that. But I thought, okay, maybe I should write uh, like you did with the uh, with the publishing uh, book. Hold that book up again. Um, write and publish your book. I, what I was going to write was a, a here's how to handle a clergy abuse case. Yeah. And I, I picked it up and I put it down and I picked it up and I put it down and I had four children and I was in my 30s and I had a busy practice and I just couldn't find enough time to do it. Mm -hmm. uh, and then it, I decided much later, maybe in my 50s, that I would write um, a novel instead because it gave me the license to embellish and make it much more uh, compelling, for lack mm -hmm. of a better way to say it. Mm -hmm. So again, I started over again and, and wrote uh, a few pages and put it down and wrote a few pages and put it down and it just wouldn't come together. And then when I started to slow my practice down, I said to myself, self, you know, you promised yourself you would do this. Now go ahead and do it. Mm -hmm. And and uh, in my mid 60s, I'm now 71. In my mid 60s, I wrote it again in earnest 
and the result was my first novel, Betrayal of Faith. Mm. The the bucket list item, as I refer to it, was fulfilled, and I thought I was going to be a one and done author. Um, here I am, thirteen, I think it is, books later. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've turned it into a post-retirement career. There was something that happened that caused that that to happen, but but uh, in in uh, in the news, and that was the election of President Trump. Mm-hmm. Uh, I ended up writing a second book about during the election. It wasn't after he was elected; it was during the 2016 election. Mm-hmm. I decided to write a book about what it would look like if a bigot became president of the United States, mm-hmm. not not knowing he'd win, and not necessarily writing specifically about him, but he was the inspiration for uh, this novel about a really evil president. Uh, the funny part about that story is that a lot of people jumped on social media and accused me of doing a hit job on the president. Mm-hmm. And my response was, and still is, I wrote an evil, I wrote a book about an evil bigot president who was not Donald Trump. If you see a similarity between my evil president and Donald Trump, that's on him, not on me. Mm-hmm. So the the uh there apparent there turned out to be some even though the book was released before he became president, there turned out to be some parallels between my evil guy and the president that the people of America elected mm-hmm. in two thousand sixteen. Mm-hmm. Once I wrote that book uh, book three, book four, book five, book six, book seven uh, started to kind of flow. I, I started picking out topics from the news and turning them into legal thrillers. Mm. And, and I've enjoyed myself. The, the biggest thing uh, I would say to anybody who is looking to write as a career is you need to enjoy what you're doing. Hmm. Um, I can tell when I, whenever I talk to you, I can tell you enjoy what you're doing. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and while, you know, I, I'm, I'm certainly not suggesting it's not important to make a living. And one of the nice things about me is I've made my living prior to becoming an author. Mm-hmm. So, so making money is not my number one goal. It would be nice, but, uh, cause it would, it would, uh, allow me to, be more creative, mm-hmm. but but it's not my number one goal in writing. Uh, my number one goal in writing is to keep myself sharp and enjoy what I'm doing. Wow, and and that's important too. Yeah, that's that's very good. Yeah, and it's important. And we are going to talk uh, much more on that. But I've seen your latest book is known as the Final Steps. That's your correct. latest release. When was it released? That's a, that's a new thing for me. That was released last April. Okay. It's a, as you can see, it's it's a, called a Harbor Springs Cozy Legal Mystery. Mm-hmm. Uh, in my eighth Zachary Blake book is a book called You Have the Right to Remain Silent. Mm-hmm. And unlike the first seven that were what I call ripped from the headlines, uh, novels this one uh you have the right to remain silent was a whodunit okay and it was a complete invention um as opposed to taking some story in the headlines and turning it into a novel this one this one i i devised characters and and uh, created a um agatha christie uh, Jessica Fletcher type, um, who done it, mm-hmm. and I and I enjoyed writing it. It featured Zachary Blake. It was the reason it was called. 
you, it does have it did have a political slant, which was the murder victim was a Democratic congressman, the murder suspect was his wife, who was a Republican talk show host. So it was kind of a uh, Mary Madeline, uh, uh, James Carville type uh, relationship, mm -hmm. and. Uh, he ends up dead, and she ends up being the uh, prime suspect that Zachary Blake represents. Mm -hmm. the The kicker was that she was so shocked at discovering her husband's body, she goes into a catatonic state and can't defend herself. Hence, she is silent, and that's where the title comes from. You have the right to remain silent. Mm -hmm. I enjoyed I enjoyed writing that book so much that I decided to go out of the world of Zachary Blake and write a whole new character, a former judge by the name of Rosalind Maxwell, mm -hmm. um, which was an interesting experience, by the way, because I was writing from a woman's point of view mm -hmm. um, rather than a man's. My principal protagonist is is this former judge a female she kind of um becomes a amateur sleuth in her retirement and uh, decides to uh, try to exonerate her best friend tyler who is uh, accused of the murder mm -hmm. um and uh the Harbor Springs element of the book, it's called a, a Harbor Springs cozy legal mystery. Harbor Springs is a beautiful northern Michigan town um, and, and a great setting for a novel. I, mm -hmm. first used, I first used northern Michigan in my third Zachary Blake book, Betrayal in Blue. And I thought I'd revisit the area, and, and uh, it made for a, a great setting for this new little cozy mystery. That again, I I, I enjoy writing in the who done it uh, genre, and mm. it's a it's a nice little book. I had fun writing it. Well, uh, thank thank you for writing it, because someone is going to enjoy reading it. Now, talking of reading, and. I know we, having been a lawyer and a, an attorney, you, you read quite widely and the, that's the only way that you can be able to mention several authors. And after retirement, now since you went into writing, how much do you still read and what do you read? I, I didn't catch the, how much read, do I what? Read, read. How much do you read, and uh, what is it? Oh, I, I I've read a lot of different uh, uh, thriller, uh, legal thriller, mis mystery. Um, I I don't read much. Uh, <laughs> it's not that I don't have a sense of humor. You know, I do. I I I don't read a lot of humorous books, but I. Uh, I do enjoy writing and reading uh, in the in the genre that I write. Mm -hmm. um, I, I I like, for instance, Daniel Sova uh, and Gabriel Alon novels. Uh, those are those are uh, as a Jewish guy uh, having a the hero be an Israeli. Uh, um, agent mm -hmm. uh, uh turned um art uh, uh expert mm -hmm. was kind it was kind of intriguing to me and i got hooked to, he's written 20 something gabriel lawn books and I, i've read every one of them mm -hmm. uh, i like vince flynn uh i like brad thor uh, i like john grissom on the legal side uh, richard north patterson uh james patterson although i don't think his his novels are as uh um well thought out as uh as the other authors i mentioned okay. but i like i like 
intrigue and drama and and spy thrillers and what have you. Um, the the little whodunits, I, I've I've enjoyed a few of uh, of Agatha Christie's novels. I haven't read them all. Mm-hmm. Um, and the you know the idea of pres- uh, as a kid growing up watching you know Columbo and and uh, as I mentioned earlier, Murder She Wrote, uh, Jessica Fletcher. Uh, I I kind of found trying to figure out the person who is guilty of the crime when they introduce this character after this character after that character after that character mm-hmm. was an it was an interesting process and that's what I tried to do with with you have the right to remain silent and the final steps so mm-hmm. I, I that's kind of a, a thumbnail sketch of the kinds of stuff I like to read and also the kind of stuff I like to write about Wow. On the on the children's side, I like to give kids a lesson in safety or in social justice, and that's what I tried to do with uh, Happy Jack, the book we talked about earlier, and my new book, which is called "What Should I Do One Thing or Two About mm. Distracted Driving." Hmm. Wow, that's quite some reading, and also some writing I'm, I'm, the, I'm, try, I'm trying yes and what's in the future what what, what ideas are in the future now I, and it's, it's good that you mentioned that uh, you thought that you were doing a one-time thing and then you found yourself going on and going on and at this point i want to believe that you still have some things in waiting <laughs> what are they you get hooked um i've i've written i'm writing a third children's book mm-hmm called The Smallest Kid in the Class. I'm writing a ninth Zachary Blake legal thriller that I'm almost finished. Mm -hmm. And the new uh, target genre, I'm writing what I call a legal romance novel. Mm -hmm. Um, And again, I'm introducing new characters in a new law firm, and a and a kind of a um, opposites attract uh, romance novel mm-hmm. that is set that is set uh, in a um, law firm where a woman, young woman, starts out a a, a new practice, uh, gets a. Uh, a client walks in her door with a rather compelling case, uh, and to my uh, usual um, habit, I pull something from the headlines. I won't. I won't disclose what that is. Uh, but I, the the uh, case involves a, a rather well-known event that happened in America. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's not the event, it's a similar event. Uh, she gets a, a, a case, uh, and her opposing counsel uh, is a rugged, very handsome uh, guy who never loses, and they uh, become gladiators in this lawsuit, and Sparks fly, for lack of a better way to say it, mm-hmm. Rom- romantic sparks fly, and the book takes off from there. Mm. So that that book is uh, being edited right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, I decided that since I'm not a romance novelist by trade, I'd have a romance novelist take a look at it and edit it, and that's what's being done right now. Oh, I I enjoyed writing the book. It's it's a fun book, and and I think I I did a pretty good job of of uh, writing an opposite attracts opposites attract uh, novel. It's not it's not it's not by any means a new genre. Uh, mm-hmm. You can look at you can look at the laws of attraction. Uh, you can look at uh, any Hallmark movie 
usually the, the couple hates each other and then becomes uh, uh, they get over that <laughs> and mm-hmm. and sparks fly. So that's that's kind of what what that novel that book bo- that book by the way is called uh, Love Hate Law. Love Hate Law. Love Hate Law. Oh, okay. Um, and wow. that's about what I'm doing. I got th- I've got three different uh, books that I'm working on at the same time. Hmm, that's interesting. Uh, so we keep going. We keep going. I I keep going. Yeah. Now take some time and speak to someone who who needs to have written a book, but maybe they don't have an idea. So you can inspire them to get started and publish. I what I would say to somebody who uh, is interested in in writing, but but has no specific ideas about what they want to write, is two suggestions. Choose something that was interesting in your own life, uh, a life experience, A, or B, like I did, choose something that you find interesting in the news uh, or a human interest story out there that that um, uh, is being broadcast. Uh, for instance, uh, as I indicated in my first novel, it was based on a uh, on my own life experience, uh, what I considered to be a a compelling uh, travesty of justice and an attempt by a religious organization to do bad things and I thought that was a compelling topic mm-hmm. as it as it turns out that novel is still my most popular book betrayal of faith mm. the the other books book two was was based on the presidential election in 2016 uh, book three is a book about white supremacy and and uh, the the blue line between uh, police officers protecting each other or in this case not protecting each other mm-hmm. someone someone stepped over the thin blue line book four is about a traffic stop shooting a white cop shooting an innocent black man at a, at a traffic stop uh, uh, so obviously that's based on on headline news. Mm-hmm. Uh, book five was based on a school shooting. Uh, and and by the way, these books uh, take uh, a look at how the legal system, both criminal and civil, would handle those kinds of issues or mm-hmm. should handle those kinds of issues. Uh, books book six was taken from the Kavanaugh hearings. And uh, features a a Me Too type um, story about a uh, Supreme Court justice candidate who raped a woman when he was a uh, a student. Mm-hmm. The seventh book is about the immigration crisis, and the eighth book I described earlier is a Who Done It called you have the right to remain silent. So if you go from one to seven, uh, all of the first seven novels were pulled from the headlines. Mm -hmm. There's there's plenty of material for an author to pull out of either the headlines or um, some human interest story that uh, they find touches their heart and ought to touch the hearts of their readers. Mm -hmm. Now, having said that, uh, I, not only was I a lawyer, I was an English literature major. Mm -hmm. I had some writing ability. uh, And I would suggest to budding authors that they, uh, if they don't have a, uh, a writing background or an English literature background, uh, and in my case, I have a, the benefit of not not only having 
a writing background but a legal background, uh, if you don't have that, I would suggest if that's what you want to do for a career, you either go to school and and uh, study English literature or, or uh, writing, mm -hmm. or take courses or read books like the ones that that you uh, have curated. Um, there are lots of sources. There are a lot of courses. There are online courses to help you become a writer. Uh, the other thing you have to master about writing, and the the thing that I'm failing at, is marketing your writing. Mm -hmm. If you're going, if if a if a publisher does not pick up your book and help you market it, you have to do that yourself. Mm -hmm. it, it, what we call self publishing. Mm -hmm. And there are companies that will help you self-publish, or you can do it yourself. I learned that you can do it yourself pretty easily. But the marketing component, the ability to get your work out there and have people find your novels, that's been the difficult part for me. Mm -hmm. So so a marketing background uh might be a a benefit to a budding author but there's two components you have to be able to write and you have to be able to market now there are there are some people who would say because of amazon anybody can write a book and anybody can put it out there and and if you if you're a good marketer you can sell a book um i'm not a big fan of of advocating for uh, a poor quality publication mm -hmm. some some of that is true uh, uh, with the Amazon platform and self-publishing anybody can quote self-publish a book unquote mm -hmm. uh, uh, I'm a an advocate for quality uh, I'm I'm constantly writing and rewriting uh, my novels and making sure that they meet quality standards. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't like some of the platforms out there that advocate for writing whether you're talented or not mm -hmm. and, and publishing anything uh, that you can market. So I would suggest that if you're going to write, at least make an effort to write quality. Hmm. Wow, wow. Thank you for those tips, those ideas that you've shared with us. Uh, it's a, a good thing. And uh, our viewers and our listeners are excited about this. Peter Aranj Karanja says, great insight. So he's he's excited that what you thank, have thank shared. You, thank, you, thank you, Peter. Thank you, Peter. Over Over your shoulder, yeah, is a book is a book called Achieve Your Dream. Yeah, I have not read it. Mm -hmm. uh, over your other shoulder is what does it say? Be good for good. Be good for good. Okay, now we you can talk about those. Uh, I I don't I don't mind uh, giving you the time to do that on my time. But but my point is in 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 pointing them out is achieve your dream. All of us have dreams. Yeah. Um, you chose to write about it. Mm -hmm. That's a great example of what I was talking about. If, mm. if you if you have some topic, uh, a dream in life that inspires you, and you have some writing ability, by all means, write your version of Achieve Your Dream. Mm. Uh, be good for good, I presume, means... Um, some level of of uh, either charitable giving or charitable doing or making your life uh, valuable and a benefit to others, and mm -hmm. that's a terrific topic to write about. So you kind of you kind of exemplify the kind of thing I'm talking about. You take yeah. something that you're passionate about. And turned it into a 
a nonfiction account that might help others uh, do similar things, do good things for other people. Those are great topics to write about. So they're out there. The, the, the incentive, the um, inspiration, uh, there's a wealth of stuff <laughs> out there to talk about and write about. It doesn't have to be legal. It doesn't have to be, um, you know, some complex plot. Yeah. But but in, in my judgment, as I indicated earlier, it does have to be um, cogent and something that is uh, of reasonable quality. Uh, that's the only that's the only difference between me and and some of the gurus out there that would say anybody can make a living writing a book. Mm -hmm. I don't agree with I don't agree with that. Mm -hmm. I, I don't agree that anybody can do it. Mm -hmm. uh, but I do believe that you can take your dream, live your dream and write your dream. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of what that's kind of what you've done. So I applaud you for that. Mm, thank you very much. And yeah, as you've pointed out, those books are exactly what you described them to be. And this is in stressing the idea to the listener and the viewer that just looking around, you have some interest in life. You've gone through a career and you have read something that can be of benefit to someone out there. So why not just go right back and share those ideas in a form of, of a book and let, let other people know what you know or have a by clue, the, have an idea? By the way, there are, there are uh, if, you're, if you're not someone who writes well, mm -hmm. but, you, but you have a terrific idea, there are people out there who will co-write a book for you. Mm. So you can, you can, I would suggest to you that you put your ideas on paper and, and get yourself a good editor or, or a co-author, and maybe you could accomplish the same thing that way. Mm. Yeah. I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't give up because you have, you lack writing talent for lack of a better way to say it, mm -hmm. because there are, there are writers out there dying for the opportunity to take a good idea and help you write a novel or, yeah. a, or a, or a how to book or a nonfiction uh, account. Yeah, you give them the idea, they write the book for you. And I wouldn't say it. give them the idea. Uh, you, you, you want to do more than that. Yeah, of course. Uh, if, if you want to take credit for it, but, mm -hmm. but, I, but uh, refine, refine a, a, a novel that needs, or, or uh, any kind of book that needs uh, a, a good editing job. Mm. I I look at myself as a pretty good writer. Yeah, but I, I still I'm still somebody that needs an editor, and editor. I would encourage yeah. I would encourage anybody who's writing to uh, get help. Yeah, for lack of a better way to say it, editing is part of it. And yeah, yep. So the word is out there. If you have some experience, if you have some interest, then you can always put it into a book. And those uh, words coming from Mark, thank you very much for sharing those insights with us. My pleasure. How did you, li how did you like what I wrote for your book? Was that? Oh, it's that wonderful. It? It's wonderful. Okay. I'm glad, you, I, I'm glad you liked that. Yes. And I encourage everyone, pass, every person <laughs> who's listening to us or uh, watching us to go and get the book, write and publish your book. Authors tell their stories. Mark has shared his stories, his story rather, and other people have shared their stories. So the link is in the description of this show. So click on it, go buy this book, read it. And we are looking forward to read your book sometime soon after you've got the inspiration from the book. It has got a lot of inspiration from those people that we hear feedback from. Yeah. So go ahead and uh, become a published author. It's possible. It, it absolutely is. Yeah. Once again, thank you very much for coming to this show, Mark. We appreciate you. Always good to talk to you, Anthony. Yes, it's been wonderful. And 
for those who've been watching and would like to connect with Mark on anything, reading his books or getting more inspiration of getting your book out there, then please hop on to markmbello.com and uh, you'll get to, to read more from him. Yeah. Uh, or that's, even that, that's, that's, that's how to find me and that's how to find uh, all of the books I've written. Yeah. So, uh, it'll, you know, you'll get sent somewhere else, the uh, Amazon or Barnes and Noble or whatever. But, but uh, the the way to find my list, my book list is is, and my other and my other writings. I have a podcast, I have a uh, uh, a newsletter, uh, a social justice newsletter. Uh, I, I I I write for other publications, uh, um, articles. Uh, but all of that is available at markmbello.com. Okay. So, yeah. So head over to markmbello.com and uh, get to find out all about that. This has been a wonderful show. Thank you, Mark, once again. My pleasure. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. Yeah. So this has been Now Tell Us, and I have been your host, Anthony Morori, and together with our wonderful guest author, wonderful person, Mark Embelo. We're saying keep reading and keep writing. Let's keep sharing the stories. And until next time that we have another episode on Now Tell Us, it's bye for now. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.